Hi everyone, welcome. Hi to Diane, Helen, Kenny, welcome, Betty, welcome. Hello, hello. How was everybody's weekend? Emily, hello, Kathy, hi. Hi Linda, welcome. <laughs> Hi Loretta, welcome. Hi Shannon, welcome. Come in guys. So uh, we're going to do a image from Linda Raven's Crofts. Raven's Crofts. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Uh, first colouring book today. Um, to go with the Halloween theme, uh, we have a event going in Linda Ravenscroft's Facebook group, Colouring Facebook group, <laughs> and uh, we decided that we would do something Halloween themed, so there was a whole heap of images that I listed in the event, and um, I decided that I'm going to pick one from this book because I want to finish this book eventually. And it's actually called The Calling of Merlin, so I've named it wrong in the description and the heading, but that's okay. We understand. Hi, <laughs> Debbie. Welcome. Uh, uh, Alicia's comp went really well, didn't it, Alicia? I'll let you guys tell. I'll let you tell them that. So I've actually done already a few images in this book. I've done the first page. Floor abundance. She's beautiful. That was uh, Copic's second one. The Dragon Tree, also done in Copics, that one. And then I did Fairy Homes. I've covered up the name, but... That one was with Polychromos pencils. Come up stunning, I love that one. I missed one. I don't know how I missed one, but... Um... And then I did this cutie here, Fairyland. This is watercolour, the Cotman watercolours. Hi guys, welcome. Oh no, I'm so sorry Kenny, I hope buffering goes away. Hi Pam, hi Michelle, welcome guys, come in. Hi Jo Beth. Hello Alicia. <laughs> hi Abby, welcome, come in. Hello Mia, welcome. Yeah, so the books, um, and that's it. I think that's all I've done in this one. Let me just check. Oh no, I've done another one. That's right, we did the uh, A Mad Tea Party not long ago, didn't we? So it's filling up gradually. There's not that many left. There's a uh, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine left in this book. Once I do this, there'll only be eight left in this book. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, the only way to get the books is by her website. Um, I've popped the link in the description below. But yeah, there was a couple of images that we said uh, could possibly be Halloween themed. Uh, what ones did I say? So Merlin, of course, is a, is a wizard, so... Merlin would be one of them. I think the pixies probably could be Halloween kind of themed. Any kind of fairy is, I think. But um, I did a Rumpelstiltskin in one of the other books. Uh, Lisa Castro's already done that one. It came out absolutely beautiful. Uh, kind of spooky looking, scaryish. 
glowing. <laughs> It is really pretty, Kenny. Thank you. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to use today. I can use um, watercolors. I could use Copics. I could use, I don't know, anything really. I don't want to use pencil. It will take too long. And, um, and uh, I don't want to spend much more than today on it. So... So yeah, I'm thinking maybe Copics or watercolour. Squeaky chair. I finished this one on the weekend while I was away. This is with the uh, ink tents, with the pencils and with the uh, little palette that Kenny gave me as well. Uh, so it was a mixture of both. And um, Christy and Karen uh, did, uh, for her patrons, She this is for her birthday bash thing that she's having, which is today, I believe, the 15th. Um, so happy birthday, Christine, if you're hanging around. or uh, But she came up awesome, yeah. So that was for her event in her group. And also she's doing this one. Uh, she did a, for a patron, she did a video on how to colour a, a vampire skin with Copics. But um, I decided not to do Copics because I always do Copics. So it's not a challenge for me. So um, I used Ink Tents to recreate her um, colours and what she did on hers. So it came out awesome. He's looking really kind of spooky, steely blue eyes and... <laughs> it's gonna look cool. Not much more to go. Um, I'd probably use watercolors, Copics, watercolor over Copic, but probably not the other way around. Uh, because the watercolor would compromise the paper and make it kind of mushy, it uh, might make it too rough for the markers over the top. But yeah, I'd probably do it the other way around. So I would do, if you're gonna use both, I'd do Copic first as maybe a base and then watercolour over the top. They'd mix quite well because uh, the uh, alcohol ink in the Copics won't uh, run or smudge with water, so you could use both. Hi Holly, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the big blue house. Anyway, he came out awesome. I like him. So big thanks to Christine for the skin tutorial. Um, I basically just sort of scribbled out, uh, or Christine scribbled out the colours in the video, um, and I just basically guessed, did a bit of a guesstimate of what they would look like. Hi Sean, welcome. So yeah, watercolours worked really well uh, doing the same thing. So if you don't have Copics and you are a patron of Christine's and you did see the video, uh, you could do it with watercolour. There you go came out pretty cool. I did have to add a little bit of white because the watercolour sort of bled over my white space but I think it came out alright. Looks cool. He's going to have black hair so that's what I was testing here. He's going to have black hair. <laughs> black hair. But I didn't really get uh, a lot of time. Um, well I did get some time but the chairs were really uncomfortable so it was really hard to colour. Uh, in uncomfortable chairs. I was kind of leaning over a lot and um, it's pretty bad for my back already so <laughs> I didn't get much done but that's okay that's okay we're gonna color this one so what do you reckon guys should we do a vote I've got really just tons of different watercolors I've got Cotman's uh, there's a couple of extras in there too. I added my own skin colour in there. Um, I've got Neo Colours. I've got Gelato. Gelato. Gelatos. Yeah, they're difficult to use, but I've got them. Uh, I've also got tons of Neo Colours. What else have I got? I've got a few sets of the Prima 
watercolors. Rah. Prima marketing. Got a couple of sets of those. That's the complexion one. They come in little tins. They're kind of a, they're good, but they're a pain when you want to use uh, a color out of every single set. So uh, I tend not to grab them out because I've got like five little tins. Um, so there you go. That's watercolors. And you know what I've got in Copics, of course, pretty much everything. <laughs> I just did another art shop order, got it getting it delivered. I've ordered some uh, white charcoal, which I've seen Lisa Matrokin use, and it comes out really awesome. So, um, yeah, I, I thought I might give that a go for some tanned, toned paper coloring. Um, and I also ordered a couple more refills, and I ordered a Stay Wet palette uh, for my acrylic painting because I still haven't finished that Disney one and I want to finish it but uh, my paint keeps drying and it's a pain in the butt so um, yeah anyway I should shut up <laughs> oh dear oh do we have buffering I'm sorry what a pain hey Yeah, um, gelatos are okay. I don't, they're not very bright. They're not very pigmented. Um, they're all right for things like um, art journaling and things like that because, you know, they're just all right for that. I used some gelatos on one of these images actually. Um, this one was done with gelatos. Well, the top part was anyway. Uh, this was done with uh, watercolor, I'm pretty sure pencil watercolor pencil this bit and the outside was acrylic paint um, but the hat and all that was done with uh, and the pink rosy cheeks and the lips was all done with with um, gelatos there's also some kind of shiny gold parts on there as well I did do an order a Jane Davenport order this week as well I ordered uh, one of her finishing her license to quill pens and some finishing line pens um, to have a go at her license to quill pen looks really cool it's got um really thick I got glitter on that one too glitter glitter anyway um yeah the gelatos aren't good for doing something like this they're too thick and uh yeah uh, not very good for doing tiny little areas like this so uh but yeah they're great for like putting on blush and things like that onto skin and that kind of thing so that's a Davenport what are we talking about <laughs> hi Joey welcome um yeah that that image was a Jane Davenport image that I did these are all so Jane Davenport did that uh, making faces workshop and um I put these are images from one of her books uh whimsical whimsical girls I think it was so I put them I printed them onto some watercolor paper and made a book out of it um, and this one I did some it's a bit messy looking this one I did some stamps on pages so these are her stencils sorry uh, so they've been drawn out and played around with those that's my little watercolor one um so they were all those ones were all stenciled faces these ones are all faces out of a whimsical whimsical girls coloring book uh journal sorry i keep calling it a coloring book it's a journal this one came out of this one so they were all out of this one and i've just printed them on a little bit of um watercolor paper so i could put them into little books for the workshop which was kind of fun um, I did get a few. I've got a four Jane Davenport books now. Gelatos. Gelatos are pretty cool. Um, you, you, you put them. You can put them straight down on paper, and uh, you can smudge them like a oil pastel kind of. Uh, smudge them around and then let them dry, and they're permanent. So that image that I did here on the back here, this here is gelato, but it's not um, wet anymore. Once it's dried, it kind of becomes more permanent. So, uh, but yeah, I just drew on there with the actual thing and then I rubbed it in over the top of the paper and then I let it dry. 
So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can also use it wet as well, but I find that if you wet it um, like a watercolour, it, uh, it's not very pigmented, so it goes really pale and translucent. Uh, so it's really hard to get nice colour depth with it like that. Uh, gelatos is made from Fab Faber Castell make gelatos. They make them for stamps. So uh, you can, uh, let me give you an example. Hang on, I'll see if I can find a stamp. So this is a Jane Davenport set of uh, stamps. I've used a few of them. And uh, they're designed for card making and stamping, which is kind of cool. Let's add one onto one of these pages here that I haven't done. You can be a mermaid, yeah. Uh, so you can just place it on. It depends on what kind of stamp you've got, I would assume. Or you can use a brush to put it on as well. Uh, but yeah, they were designed uh, for card making and stamping. Paper's not flat there. There you go. And then once that dries, it will become permanent and uh, I won't need to worry about it smudging or anything. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, my paper's not uh, flat. It's a bit hard to do it when your paper's not flat, hey? There you go. It's running out already. But yeah, it's uh, that's what they... When they sell them in sets, you get like a little little sponge to put on top of a stamp and you also get a little uh, paintbrush as well which I have no idea where that is um, it's actually quite a cute little paintbrush actually it's got a when you buy it in sets that is I have no idea where my mine is but uh, it's got like a clear crystal clear brush here it is <laughs> Faber Castell, uh, and it's got uh, mine's a bit stained because I've used it, but yeah, so that kind of comes with the set when you buy a set. Pretty cool. Sometimes you can buy them with stamps too, I think. So yeah. Where did I put that one? I think I put it away without the lid on it. I did. Needs a lid. Uh, or you can use it uh, just on the page like that. Uh, I just use my finger and blend it out. There you go, she's got a nice pink cheek now. <laughs> uh, lots of different ways you can use it. But um, I've mainly used them for stamps and also for doing Jane Davenport stuff. Um, her little slapdash kind of uh, style stamp away yeah but not really something that I would use on this I think it's uh, I'm just gonna leave that open too so it dries off it doesn't smudge. There you go. Yeah, you can use water with them, but I find that they're still quite, uh, they're not very opaque and it's hard to see the colour, so. But yeah, it's personal opinion, of course. No, turn it, hi Christy, welcome. Turn it to live chat, peoples. <laughs> um, Anyway, I found some gelatos really cheap and uh, I was given some actually by Lo and um, yeah, I don't mind them. Had a bit of a play. I like them on the other stuff so. 
yeah, scrapping. Yeah, that's right, Pam. A bit of scrapping. Um, I like doing it with the art journaling. Uh, there's something different. And, um, yeah. <laughs> Abby. All right, so what are we going to use? Who wants to vote? No, the brush is really soft, actually. Uh, Joey, it's, like, really soft. It's a watercolour brush. Um, yeah. I've used it with blue watercolour, but look at that. It's completely stained it. <laughs> it's got some acrylic paint on it here, too. It's funny how you just get stuff everywhere when you're doing mixed media. For sure. <laughs> For sure. All right, let's vote. Marketers or watercolour? Mm -mm. I'm just going to wait and see what comes up. interesting <laughs> all right I'm down with that we only had three markers so far one two three markers four five markers I can't choose <laughs> one two three four five six seven let's do watercolor I'm going to use a Winsor & Newton Cotman set and I'll also use, I might need to just sort of wipe this down a little bit maybe. Um, and uh, I'll probably use a little bit of the Caran d'Ache Neo colours and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to clean this off. A bit of water here. And uh, I'm just going to wipe this down a bit. Get rid of some of the old colour. This is possibly when I was doing my... I sure don't remember the last time I used these. It's, it's been like this for a while, so it might have stained a little bit. <laughs> I kind of use them sporadically, so... It's been a while since I used this set, though. Actually, I wonder if it was when I did the watercolour one in here. Just wondering to myself here. There we go. Just cleaned that side off. There. So the Cotman set come individually wrapped. There's 45 little pots in it. Um, the art shop have actually got them on special at the moment for $120 for those in Australia. Um, I was looking at getting my daughter one actually and uh, she said, eh. I was like, oh, alright then. It's her 18th coming up, not Alicia, the other one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she wasn't quite, kind of that fussed, so. Because she doesn't, she's not that great at watercolour like she, yet, she reckons, so. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But they are on special. I did see them on under their sale section on their website when I was on there the other day ordering my bits and pieces I've got a bit of white gouache on, gouache, gouache on here and it might come off so I'll just scratch that off later they're not too bad they're like the student well they're not artist quality I wouldn't think Cotman they've got a artist quality they're not even student. They're probably in the middle of student and artist quality. Kirsty Partridge. Um, she's got millions of subscribers and <laughs> thousands of patrons. She uses the Cotman set all the time. Uh, the little pan that I made here is uh, not Cotman. It is. I have no idea what brand. Um, hmm. Let me think. Look at my bag. 
better quality paints that I don't use. There we go. Um, Naples Yellow Reddish. I don't know what brand that is. <laughs> Anyone pronounce that? Uh, but that's this uh, apricot kind of tone here. And these are all of my other uh, expensive brand ones. So, uh, Schminky, Schminka, and the uh, Windsor & Newton Professional Range. They're in little, this is just baby size tubes, but uh, Windsor & Newton. Muse Windsor & Newton. <laughs> but I've got a whole heap of colours in here that makes up pretty much any colour. So I've got colours here that pretty much make up any colour in the colours, if that makes any sense at all. Um, and these ones are all permanent, so they've got a high quality um, light fastness rating, whereas the Cottons don't have as good a light fast rating. Some of them do, but some of them aren't as good. Yeah, those are, I think it cost me around, for this small set of watercolours. <laughs> How many is in here? Let me work it out. Hang on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's a Daniel Smith one in there too. There's about 25 colours in there. Um, I think it was around $300 for that. <laughs> so, But yeah, when I uh, started doing a course with um, Anna Mason, she has a whole list of colours that uh, she uses, and they're the only colours that she uses, and pretty much her palette... Uh, is actually pretty awesome and it makes any color that you can imagine. And, uh, this is what my watercolor palette looks like for that. <laughs> it's just a bowl. <laughs> But uh, these are all the colours that uh, she suggested, so, um, yeah, I think my favourite colour is Permanent Rose. <laughs> um, but yeah, this can pretty make pretty much make any colour on the, uh, that you could imagine, all mixed together. That's my palette. It's pretty big, huh? <laughs> Anyway, we're going to use the Cotman set. So, um, they've usually got on them what they are on the side, so I'm not going to be able to tell you that one's dioxazine purple, um, yellow ochre. So they've all got names on the sides of them. That one's actually pretty plump looking. A couple of them are professional Windsor and Newton because I got a whole heap of watercolours from this guy who was closing down a shop and um, some of them were professional but most of them were Cotman um, so I stuck a couple of the professional ones in there as well. Kenny I'm so sorry that you're not well. I hope that you are feeling better. Hmm. Shall we get to it? brushes everywhere. I'm going to use a mixture of brushes again. Oh, I've got 10, 6, 4, and 2. And then I've got some animation brushes in a three, one, zero, zero, and zero. Well, that's not what we want. <laughs> Wait, double zero, triple zero, and I think there's a five zero in here somewhere. I don't know where that is. Hiding. One. Two. 
I'm not sure where I've placed that one. It's hiding. Oh, here we go. Found it. Okay, now I have it. That's weird. Got a brush missing. I know to me if I find it. I think I was using it for my acrylic for the uh anyway, that'll do. Those ones will do. Hi Rochelle, welcome. What MS and NS image are you missing? Yes, I was in Ballarat for the weekend. It was a little bit of... I sat in the hotel room most of the time, didn't I, Alicia? It's all good, though. <laughs> all good. I'm just going to activate uh, some of the colours with a little bit of water so they're a bit wet before I start. I can't tell you what colours I'm using because I have no idea. <laughs> yes, it does. It's got the um, the common one in it. This one. It's in the calendar. It's called something coven. I don't remember. Shelly knows. Shelly knows. She does, she does. I'm just going to take this off so you can see the colours. How's that? Is that helpful? Yeah. This can go down here. I find that working uh, light to dark the most helpful with watercolours. It's a little bit different to uh, what we do with what I do with Copics anyway. Usually with Copic I work the other way around. going to start putting in some colour. I'm going to use um, Linda's original image as a bit of a guide to of, uh, where I put colours. There's so many elements in here too so I've just got a bit of work to do so I'll just try to do the same color in those areas that I need to first and then move on and add in some other colors with it. Make sense? I think the reason that most people work dark to or light to dark with watercolor is because Pretty much, once you put the colour down, especially darker colour, it's harder to lift off darker colour than it is lighter colour. Oh, that's my alarm. Time's up already. What? No. <laughs> just, just kidding. You have 10 witches. I have 12. Actually, I've got 11. I haven't brought one of them yet, uh, but I, I had all of them. So that was, except one. So I'm pretty happy with that. I started uh, 
the Oracle of the Forest, which patrons will have already seen my work in progress for that one. Using uh, luminance with the skin on that, it's looking really pretty. Figured that since I'm doing so many of Ennis's witches, it'd be good to do uh, lots of different uh, mediums. Adding, uh, it's some sort of red. It's just too hard to pop them out to tell you what I'm using. I'm using a Lizarin Crimson. Nice colour. Fairly dark off the bat because the areas that I'm colouring are actually fairly dark in here, so why not? <gasps> Cynthia, you haven't! How did you do that? I mean, I was I finished like four in a weekend, but um, last weekend to get it going and get myself motivated and started, but that's awesome. Well done. I think I'm on my sixth witch now. So, um, I've still got a while to go. I'm hoping I'll finish them all by the end of the month. I think I'll be colouring an MS, NS image for, um, for the October colour along, which is a Halloween one. So, I think I might do that. Now I'm going to make that darker and add in, if I can find it, I think I might have to try and pull out some of these so I can see what colours they are. So I'm looking for my Payne's Grey because I like that colour. I'm just going to darken my red up a little bit. Can't get it out. All right, I got my plate here with my paint grey on it. I'll use that. <laughs> I'm just going to add a little bit of paint grey to my red. My chair is squeaky today. Just make it a bit darker. Tiny little berries in here. Berries. So who does watercolor? Who who is is really good at it, and uh, you know would consider themselves professional at it? <laughs> Not myself. <laughs> I'm just dabbling in it. I like the realism stuff more than the loose style just adding some depth into my little crystals here just got little spots on his lips that are in the darker of the shade I think I'll add a little bit I think this is opera rose here I'm guessing um, it's pretty bright but I just want to add that pink into his lips Hi, 
Shara, welcome. Hi Miranda, welcome sweetheart. Hi Lulu, welcome. Is it Jocelyn? Jocelyn? I don't know how to say it, but welcome. <laughs> Come in to seeing everybody. Who else just dropped in then? I just did an ink tense image, so um, I'm good, Miranda. Thank you. Uh, so, hi, Star. Welcome. Did I see you there before? Uh, what else will I do with a little bit of this pink? I'm thinking maybe doing just a really light layer. I'm just going to mix heaps of water with this. So it's really pale. Basically that's how I lighten my colours. I'm just going to add some of this into these little white flowers all around the outside. make them look less white <laughs> there's a lot of green in this one so I need a bit of pink red to uh, be complementary to it oh, a bit too much on my brush there Nani is good she's grown so much uh, I can't get her here now. She's just too boisterous. <laughs> She's full on. She missed us over the weekend while we were gone. So I uh, came back and she was very excited to see us. I wasn't very excited to have her in my bed again though. She, <laughs> she takes up all the room. But uh, it was nice to hear her snoring next to me again. <laughs> it was. Shadow is now taking her turn on the bed. Having a nap. Just adding a bit of colour in so they're not just white. There's one over here. This one's quite dark, isn't it? It's in the shadows a bit. No, she looks nothing like a pug. <laughs> She's grown into her skin now. Um, actually, Hubby did a live photo for me the other day. I'll see if I can get that out and show you. It's quite cute. Um, I love the iPhone. It's so cool being able to do those live, live uh, pictures. And uh, she's looking quite ferocious in it, but she's not at all. <laughs> So let's have a look. All right, now here's the picture. Okay, you ready? I'm going to hold my finger on it because it's a live photo. Wait, I need to turn it up. <laughs> it's one of those things that you've got to off silent mode. <laughs> How cute is that? <laughs> She's gorgeous. <laughs> I don't know how we got it to do that, but uh, 
<laughs> it was very cute. She's already a handful, Loretta. She just she gets into the biggest mischief. Our school is here. She's down there looking after her. <laughs> How's it going down there, Alicia? <laughs> oh, she's a rat bag. She's a full on rat bag. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of um some uh, raw sienna. Oh, that's really thick. Just off my brush a bit there. Raw sienna to the upper rose, and uh, I'm just gonna make a kind of apricot color here. It's kind of an apricotty color. going to go into the shadows for now. Add some of this in. Yeah, she's a rat bag. She's getting smelly now too because she's outside playing in the dirt and rolling in the grass and Uh, painful. <laughs> I have a thing with smelly dogs. I really don't like them. <laughs> Being smelly. I don't know. It's just one of those things. Especially when they're wet. Ew. Wet dog. So that was a little bit of raw sienna and I'm pretty sure it's opera rose. Um, down in there. I'm wondering if I can pull the colors out. I might be able to drag them along a little bit. They're all kind of stuck in there with water holding them down. Permanent rose, sorry my bad. It was permanent rose. Close enough to upper rose. Actually, quite a nice color. I like it. It's soft. It's an apricotty kind of pink. I'm using uh, Linda Ravenscroft's original image as a bit of a um, guide, I guess. Not the same colors, but similar. I usually end up with brighter colors. I like the bright colors, so <laughs> I usually end up doing it a little bit brighter than she does. I'm using the grayscale in the image to help me with my shading. It's another reason why I love her books. I love the grayscale style. It's my thing. <laughs> Looks good. Got a little tiny little bit of permanent rose and I'm just going over all of the white of the flowers now just kind of blending in the hard edges if I can rat bag uh, <laughs> She's a Miranda, she's a American Staffy uh, cross bull Arab. Her mum was a American Staffy cross bull Arab and uh, her dad was a purebred Staffy, American Staffy. So um, 
Yeah, rat bag. That that's an Australian term, I think. Uh, it means brat. You know. <laughs> uh, the names for brat is a uh, terror horror rat bag. Um, basically, someone who not maliciously causes trouble. <laughs> they, they just like to have fun and get into things. Does that make sense? <laughs> That's what we would call a rat bag here. Does that make sense? <laughs> Did I explain that well enough? We probably got, I probably say heaps of things that you go, go, what are you talking about? Um, we have words for everything here. <laughs> we shorten things and put O on the end. <laughs> Oh, even um, somebody was saying a rubbish bin. I was saying a rubbish bin, and someone was like, what is that? Somebody didn't know what a rubbish bin was. In the bin. We say I put it in the bin. <laughs> oh, this, like, shell thing down here. I'm going to do that with that skin colour that we just had. Just go over that. That's a real shell colour, actually. Looks good. I need some yellow in this picture. I don't know what we're using. Uh, cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow hue. Supposedly. A bit of that. And uh, let's go with that uh, raw sienna that I used before. A bit of that in there. That's good. It needs pink. It needs a wee bit of pink. Here we go. Or yellow. That's good. I'm gonna put this in these little. What are these? I don't even know what they are, but we're gonna put some of this yellow in here. Oh, I missed one before. I did uh, flip through at the start. It's pretty much. I've actually done an image out of five images in this book now. I've got. What we're saying after this one, I've only got eight to go. I missed one down here, so I'm just going to go with the pink because I still had some left. Good. <laughs> um, I can show you the cover but I don't want to flip through because I haven't got much time left now and I want to get most of this done so this is the first book and um, I did show at the start the ones I've actually done in it as well so you want to check that out there all right I'm gonna add some of that what did I say it was? Reddish, Naples, yellow, reddish or something it was called. <laughs> this is actually quite, um, this is an opaque colour. It's not like um, translucent like the other watercolours. It's more like wash to me. It's a bit more opaque. Get a little 
bit of that into the skin. Just going to try to avoid the uh, tattoo because as I said this is a little bit more opaque. I don't want to cover over that black. worth getting an extra color in your set just to make it a little bit easier when it comes to skin tones I find anyway um, I'd always come along and struggle with what to do but adding this has sort of helped a bit made it a little bit easier Some of that into the lip there and around the edges of the beard. Just zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Actually, I quite like how that's coming out. got a nice yellow tinge to it well of course it is yellow <laughs> just grab a little bit more just making sure I mix a bit of water in it so it's not too opaque well, I wonder if that's why my computer might have had some buffering. My computer was doing some sort of update thing. Silly thing. I think it was a virus scan. Okay, that's good. I think I'll just put a little bit of pink in his nail. I just need to wash that brush really well. That uh, stuff stayed in there. I'm using the number one too in the animation on at the moment. Just going to use some of that pink in her, his nails here. Nail, there's only one there, isn't there? <laughs> He's looking good. All right, let's add a tiny little bit of, I don't know, some sort of brown. Let me test them. What have we got? Actually, no, that's not red enough. That's like a chocolate color. I'm just, no, nope. oh, there's my paint's gray. I found it. Uh, here we go. What's this one? Some sort of burnt sienna, I was thinking. Oh, look at that. Found it. Burnt Sienna is like a brown, but it's orange. <laughs> Just going to add a tiny little bit of that into these shadows. Just a little bit. Deepen them up slightly. So I've come over the top of those other colours too. So they're just kind of blending in uh, into one. darkening him up a little bit I think the other ones that I was looking at was like an umber just got a bit of green sort of tone it's the only way I could explain it I'm 
And I've got no colour left on my brush, but I'm just using uh, a clean wet brush just to blend in any area that looks too defined or has too much of a harsh line. I don't want harsh lines, I want it to blend nice and smoothly. Okay. Hands. Hi Pat, welcome. I missed you there before. Who else did I miss? Oh Holly, are you leaving? Just gradually building up to the darkest colour now. He's looking pretty good, isn't he? Just uh, adding a little bit more of that light, the lightest colour, the, the uh, whatever it was, the apricot yellow colour. <laughs> Good name. Alright, I think we need some more depth in there. Let's try a little bit of whatever that brown was. I think it was an umber of some sort. Just in the really dark shadow areas now. So there's a couple where the hair is overhanging and uh, the helmet thing here. Just gonna add a little bit into his cheekbone or under his cheekbone. him some character a couple of the Cotman colors go a little bit cloudy I feel um, but they actually don't look too bad once you finish so find that though with the um, the ink tents even doing the uh, Christine Karen image on the weekend that I the ink tent seems to dull off a little bit more than you think it, it will once it's all dried and done just added a tiny little bit of um, Payne's gray into that shadow there because it's quite dark and just under the hand here again as well so what's everybody coloring is everyone doing Halloween images or if we've got some that don't do Halloween I know some don't, that's okay. Um, 
Okay, so bleed through, no, not with watercolours, pencils, or anything like that. Uh, they are single-sided though, but markers... Okay, so this one is a watercolour one on this side. I'll zoom back out again, sorry, I forgot I was zoomed in. So watercolour on this side and you can't see it come through at all. It doesn't even buckle the page. Okay. So that's watercolour on that side. And then this one's got pencil in the middle. So there's pencil in here. And then this is marker around the outside, black marker. And then... This is completely marker, so you can just see it, and that's marker, so you can just see it through. Um, so I would suggest if you're going to use marker, put something underneath just in case, but um, with watercolour and pencil, pleh. no issues at all. Uh, this paper is pretty awesome actually back to it I think I need a little bit of that darker a little bit of Payne's grey in with that dark brown again I don't know what colour it is I'm sorry it's too hard to tell it was really hard to pull them out of the I just know that that one was Payne's grey because it's like a blue coloured grey. <laughs> just grabbing some more colour. I think that's almost like a raw, actually it might be a dark chocolate or something that one. I'd like to be able to tell you. That one's burnt. Oh, what's this one next to it? Van Dyke Brown. Yay! I'm mixing a little bit of Van Dyke Brown with some of the paints grey. Just to darken it up a little bit. Did you hear that? That was my ringtone. It's because I turned my phone off silent, didn't I? <laughs> no, Alicia, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention, try to mention what colours I was using there. Art Nouveau. Yeah, I'm not, I've kind of gone off Jade Summer a little. Because uh, they're not the artist. The Jade Summer is the publisher. And uh, the artists don't actually get mentioned in it. If anyone didn't know that. Going back to my skin colour. Just adding a layer of that in. I don't know, I kind of, I mean, some of the images are really nice. I don't know, I think the artist should get mentioned, that's all. Who else agrees? I mean, if I was drawing some pictures for a colouring book and, you know, I'd like to have a bit of exposure. <laughs> Good. It'd be better to have exposure. Just 
Just adding a little bit of that skin colour on the very edge of that previous colour, just so it's not too dark and that we've got a bit of a blend going on. I like you. I think we'll go over the tattoo with a bit of black liner later. All right, I need to add some green just to give me some contrast and see where I'm heading. Yeah. What have I got? Emerald green. Thank you. I need a bit of water. I've got a little pipette thing here. I'm just going to add a little bit of water into the greens. Got hookers green. Uh, hookers green. Oh, there are sets of paints too. There's 45 different um, uh, you know, what are they called? Pans in it. But um, some of the colours are actually in there twice so you'll have um, maybe two blacks and two whites and maybe just the main colors I think usually I think there's two hookers greens in here there might have been two different a blue that there was doubles of um, so there's not actually um, 45 different colors I'm using the emerald green and my brush is too wet Trip some on my page there. And a little bit of hooker's green, it's a bit darker in the shadows of each of these little crystals. Ah, don't drop your brush. Add some of that Van Dyke brown. To the hookers green, I think. It's nice and dark, yeah. Hmm. Do I want to go more brown or more green? I think we might go the green. <laughs> I'm going to put this in his hat. The paper in the Linda Ravenscroft books is 300 GSM. It's really thick card. Uh, it's kind of smooth. It's a mixed media paper. It kind of reminds me of the texture of the Strathmore Tantone paper. It's got a bit of a shiny sort of surface, but um, it takes watercolour, markers, pencils, everything. It takes pretty much everything really well. I think the only thing I haven't tried is, say, acrylics. I've used pan pastels in that. I've used loads and loads of stuff. Yeah, I don't think I've used acrylic paint. But uh, if watercolour goes well, acrylic paint would be fine. Just 
Has anyone seen the sword in the stone? The Disney movie. I have Merlin packing his bag in my head. Prestidigitorium. <laughs> Uh, now I'm going to use where I put a little bit of green into the Van Dyke brown. That was a hooker's green. And I'm just going to add this into the stems that I did around the outside to the shadows. Going over the red or alizarin crimson, I think it was, that we did down in here. We can't see me doing that, I just realised. Shrunk you. You're all shrunked. <laughs> I love this to be like Carbothello pastels. They're awesome. They're one of my favourites. But I haven't tried the Karen Dash ones yet. I didn't like the Faber-Castell pastel pencils that much. They were really hard. Um, there's a couple of stems through here. I'm just going to go and find those. And um, I know that uh, a couple of people like the, oh gosh, it's just left my mind now what I was going to say then. I can't remember what brand it is. Gone. Oh yes, I've seen Merlin. We actually just recently watched a couple of episodes of Merlin. A little bit more of the hooker's green with that brown because there is this little necklace down here I'm going to do around the outside of that the same as the hat hmm what else will I do I think that might do for that colour. His skin is looking awesome. Like it a lot. Should we give him some brown eyes? I think so. Brown green. Let's use the same colour in his eyes that we've done in the hat. Might put a little bit more green into there, but adding a little bit of the emerald green in there. Oh, that's pretty. I don't know what colour eyes Melon had, but he's now got green eyes. <laughs> uh, let's see. A bit of Payne's grey. In the helmet. Might need a smaller brush for that. Quite a large area. Quite a small area. Duh. <laughs> Hi Cab, welcome. Hi Vala, welcome. 
I don't know if there's any. I, I'm sure there's lots I can't do. I can't do lots. Okay, Bane's grey. Bloody helmet here. I just grabbed a smaller brush. This is a zero, triple zero. Just so I can get into the shaded areas of the crown there. He's also got a um, necklace on too, which I want to fill in a little bit. We're going to make use of our white gel pen at the end too and get all that white highlights in there as well. Just got a necklace, these are really tiny little details but And there's a chain around his neck. Doing that. Just adding to the shadows. got a ring on his finger here I'll do the same some sort of magical ring is there? there's a couple there all right I want some purple There's two purples in this set, um, Dioxazine Violet and what's the other one? I can't get the other one out, it's actually stuck in with watercolour and mauve. I've mixed those two together, Ugh, god they're sticky, stucky, um, and just going to use that with a little bit of the pink that we used before, which was a permanent rose. It's like a bright pinky purple colour. And then using that colour without the pink in it. Oops. Oh, I just got, look, it was too wet and it just grabbed a whole heap on my brush then. Wow, that's really neat. So I want to mix a bit of water in with that.
just going to go with the violet this time. Hi Dawn, did I miss you before? No worries Helen, thanks for dropping in. I know that I don't usually do Tuesdays and um, yeah, I actually need to go and have a quick break. Give me two seconds guys. Back again, sorry. <laughs> Back to the darker purple. Oh, I left my cloth over there. Tiny details in here. I do believe that this book was actually uh, sold out for a little while. But um, it's actually back in the shop again. Definitely popular. watercolor harder to uh, to um, do tutorials on because you kind of it's hard to uh, explain sometimes what I'm actually doing <laughs> and um, to get the colors exact and things like that just putting a wash over the whole lot and then I'll come back in with some uh, white gel pen and just add in some of those highlight details that are there. Later on. Looking good. I think that's a flower sticking out there. I need some of that pink that we used earlier. So around the... What else have we got? Blending a couple of those things in there. Oh yeah, Neo 2's are good. Neo 2's are beautiful and bright. Actually, Neo 2's, they've got, um, I don't know which set it's actually in, but I found an individual uh, flesh-coloured Neo colour, which I really like. Finesh is good. Okay, I need to add... To add some yellow in these flowers, I think. What 
yellows do I have? Cadmium yellow. Cambogue yellow. Cam, I don't know how to say that. Gambogue. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Hang on, what's this one? Lemon, lemon yellow hue. And what other yellows have I got? Cadmium yellow. Wait, cadmium yellow hue maybe? I got two of those. There you go. <laughs> Didn't even know. I'm going to use the lemon yellow. Bit of water in there though. Yeah, he looks like he's uh, sad actually, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks sad. Oh, that's a good yellow. Tiny little bit of that sienna colour in there. That's better. Just going to go around the outside of these middle parts and also go into the middle of the flowers. He does kind of look a bit sad, doesn't he? he? Look like he's lost his way. I'm sure he hasn't. He's just, uh, oops. Great, I can't lay that down on my page now. Got <laughs> some of that on there. I made a mess. It's all good. I'm good at that. I'm good at making a mess. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Joe Beth. I just couldn't print. I didn't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> I'm bad with names. Not deliberately, it's just because, you know, there's no one here to sort of correct me and go, no, no, it's called this. This is how you pronounce it. yellow green what have we got here well that's nice I'm gonna add some I don't know what it is so don't ask to my yellow I'm adding a bit of green to make it like a chartreuse color it looks like some sort of olive green I added in with the yellow and uh, I'm just gonna do this some like little like pod things I'm just going to add some colour into those. Might need to be a little bit stronger, actually. The um, paint might have been a little bit too thin. I couldn't see it over this really dark grey ink. So I've just done the same colour mix, but just added more paint to make it a bit thicker. I'm going to do the vines here, that colour. I kind of want them to stand out a little bit if I can. Because it's so grey, we want, I like to use the brighter colours with it so that they stand out. Some more down here. There was a couple over here as well.
you up the top there. Hi Charlotte, welcome. Gambo. Yeah? Gambo. Did I say that right? I like so far. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to my yellow mix. <laughs> I like to use similar colors throughout and I'm going to add mix that up so it's kind of like a greeny gold color. I make up words as I go remember. <laughs> great thing about uh, this kind of image though is that uh, it doesn't matter if you run out of a color you can kind of just mix it similar I like watercolor So I just concentrated that more in those darker areas and did a lighter layer in the lighter areas. Adding a little bit more water, just thinning it out a little bit. being weary of the time because as I said I don't normally do Tuesday so I'm not sure if anyone was supposed to be on and I apologize if you were just didn't have time to do it yesterday didn't get back until after lunch actually had a bit of traffic in the city seems bad for that add a little bit of this now I've only got a little bit left so I'm thinking I might just go into the veins of these leaves mix it up a bit There's a couple on this side still. I think if I had have used Copix, I still would have had just as much to finish. <laughs> There's just a lot of details in there. I've got some acorns down the bottom here. And uh, I'm going to do them with that brown. I've got a little bit of that brown left there. I'm just going to add that in the bottom. It's not dark enough. I'm just going to add some more of the Van Dyke brown. Oh, 
Purple and brown. Do those darker edges. I'm going to use that sort of olivey green colour. Olivey green. <laughs> uh, with a little bit of the... Actually, what is this one here? Raw umber or burnt umber? Let me have a look. Raw umber. And that's good. I'm going to place that in here. I wish I knew the names for you. I could give you the names. Could have done a colour list, but I don't know. No idea. They're all stuck in there. And <laughs> All right. Watered that down a bit. And I'm just going to cover over these leaves. Need a bigger brush. Down with a four. To it. Just going to mix a bit more. Needs to be a bit more watery. Emily is in about an hour. Okay, cool, great. Is that it? Did I miss any? Did anyone? Did I go over anyone? Because if so, I can finish up in a bit. Use more green. Oh. Hey! No. Hey! Oh, excuse me. Bless me. I wonder what these things here are in the background. Look like bubbles or pebbles of some sort. I think it was raw sienna. Mm -hmm. The one that was sticking to everything before. <laughs> uh, with a tiny little bit of that permanent rose in it. And do these strange looking feathers. I think they are. I'm not exactly sure. Cool. 
couple of spots I missed with that green just up the top here I'm just filling those in I actually quite like that um, raw sienna mix I might do a little bit of uh, green in that do that in those stones or bubbles, whatever they are. I think they might be stones of some sort. In the original image they look like some sort of stone. Go back to the green underneath here. Whoops, I got a little bit of white in that. See there was some gouache left on my palette and it's got wet now so um, I just mixed some of that green in there by accident ill good and there's even purple in there too Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi Lisa, welcome. What's 58%? Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. And there was some sort of, what did we use this little orange here for? I think we used it on the berries. Yeah. Um, I think I use a little bit of pink. I'm trying to think of what I used. Um, some yellow. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, that's good. A bit more pink. A bit more yellow. Kind of an orange color. A little bit of the burnt sienna. I've used the burnt sienna a lot. It's got a hole in it. <laughs> it has. Oop. Too much on my brush. And a little bit smaller brush. I'm going to go with a two. around the outside of this plate thing and a medallion Thanks, Kenny. Oh, you're talking about the heat. <laughs> Look up uh, nail brushes, Loretta. Nail art brushes. That's how big they are. They're tiny. You need to remake that. Bit of raw umber, a bit of yellow, and a bit of pink. Oops. Okay, got it back 
again. That took me a little while to get that colour. And uh, this time I mixed a little bit more so I could do it a little bit darker. Dripped on him. Is it Nika? 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 Nicole? I don't remember. Did I write you down? I wrote you down. No, I don't think I wrote you down. <laughs> oh, I'm just doing some watercolour. And the Ravenscroft books. Lots of fun. Pretty images. Very detailed. Good description. We'll come back in and mark out those little little highlighty bits later on too. It's the only thing with uh, this kind of image is there's lots of concentration going on here because there's so many tiny little bits that need to be uh, coloured. I'm going to make sure I don't miss any. that in there like that and uh, I think we need a little bit more of that green that I made before as I missed a leaf there and because the water's been sitting on my paints uh, they're getting a bit sticky so I'm picking up a fair bit of colour. Not being very careful, am I? <laughs> oh, good. There's a little bit of orange, no, it's green, a little bit of green down in here, where there's a leaf. got that green that I used in that but I've just got it a little bit darker now and I'm just going to add in some shadows with it these uh, brushes have got really nice fine points on them this is the number two but it's got a really nice fine fine point on it so uh, it's easy to get those nice fine lines with this one
like that. Oh yes, happy Thanksgiving. That's so weird. So what do you guys do Thanksgiving for? Is it the same reason as Thanksgiving? Because we don't have it here, so I don't understand the holidays. We have our horse racing cup here in Victoria with the Melbourne Cup on the 2nd of November. That's usually a pretty big deal here. It's funny we have these public holidays for gambling. <laughs> oh dear. Hey, I'm not complaining. Public holiday rates are good. Big dinners in Turkey, same thing. Mmm, <laughs> cookie dough. I came back to cookies that have been made for me. Yesterday, actually, Hubby had rolled some out and made some cookies for us. Just going back over those pebbles again, whatever they are. Bubbles, pebbles, whatever. Just making sure. Alright. It's looking good. Let's have a little bit of the um, Van Dyke Brown. I keep dripping my water on there. And dark brown around the outside edge. Just adding a really nice dark shadow around there. I've made it quite thick too so that it covers over some of that lighter colour to make it look like it's a shadow. And for some reason this side's really shiny. The paper. good. What do you guys think so far? Hey 
here's that colour uh, in his hair. Need it a little bit more there. Thank you, Joe Bass. So this is the uh, Van Dyke Brown still. Uh, I might need a smaller brush. I think that's a little bit too thick for hair. So I'm going to go in with the triple zero. Triple zero. Sounds like a marker. Didn't like that. Too thick. Too much on the brush. That's better. Zoom in a little bit. Hi Cece, welcome. Did you stream Pat? Did I stream over you Pat? Oh my goodness, please don't tell me I did that. It's definitely not blurry. Try changing the um, settings of the of the video to 720 is the highest one. I don't usually do over that because sometimes it can be too high. We have multiple streaming things in our house and I think that's hair here. It's got long hair, this dude. A bit in his eyebrows finishing him off now then wouldn't it we'd be getting close to finishing this area off now getting the details done he's got a strange shaped eyebrow hasn't he <laughs> Too much on the brush again there. I'm just going to use the same colour over the light and the dark and it will give us, it will make it look like I've used a couple of different colours because the grey is sitting behind. There's darker grey and lighter grey sitting there. So we've got a bit of a mix of tones which is cool that's why I like grayscale because you can kind of do a little bit of quick painting or coloring with just shading and uh, still get highlights and depths because of the grayscale behind it I'm going to need a thicker brush down here further, just around the face though, I didn't need that smaller brush for flicking the hair out. And uh, for doing the beard for sure we're going to need a thinner brush because it's tiny little strokes there.
Hi, Nick and Tina. Welcome. Oh, okay. Well, well, isn't that good then? <laughs> it was meant to be. Why is my camera wobbling so much today? <laughs> Hi, Bev. I think it's just Thanksgiving in Canada. It's not Thanksgiving in the US until until the 25th, is that correct? Of November. Two, I think. Again. All right. It's good. back in with the white pen and do those highlighted parts later. Now his beard's a little bit lighter. So um, in that brown mix um, I need to add something light. Maybe some raw sienna. To the Van Dyke brown making it slightly lighter. Let's try that here in the beard. That's good, I like that colour. And I'm going to try to do individual hair strokes if I can so we can get some of the skin tone coming through. It's only a little bit of texture but it's enough. Popping a little bit up on the side here. Lovely. Good colour. Camera's really moving today. I don't know why. It's weird. Stop it, camera. Stop moving. Stop bumping today. Am I breathing on you? Just mixing up a little bit more colour, I went out again. I so love using watercolour for these tiny little details. Like, could you imagine me doing this with Copics? It'd be so much quicker, but I'm not going to get anywhere near as much detail in it as I do with the watercolour. That's for sure. Just 
just have a little bit more of the Van Dyke brown in there down the bottom here where it's darker streaks of that through the through those lighter areas as well Tiny little bit of Payne's Grey just inside the eye there. Adding in a bit of a shadow. I'm going to use black uh, marker for the tattoo. <coughs> I've just got a Copic multi liner. it's waterproof and copic proof not that i'm using copics but uh, waterproof is a good thing too in case we want to add some color to the skin later on we can still without worrying about smudging it out i could have used um watercolor but um, I risk the watercolour sort of bleeding out a little bit into the other areas and I want it to be quite prominent so I don't want it to bleed and look like it's bled through. I'm going to keep those lines nice and sharp because it is a tattoo. It is cool, huh? I got these off uh, Anna Mason. They're from Rosemary & Co. Uh, in England. They delivered to Australia, which was really good. I was actually quite happy with the price of them. It came in a set, so they're from Rosemary & Co. But they're Anna Mason's brushes. So she's selected the type of brush and the sizes and things like that for her course. So, um, But yeah, they are good. I like them. Need a little bit of that orangey brown that we used in the background. Add a little bit of the green that we used in those leaves around his head. Just down these little leaves on his pendant here.
Merrick Brown on the acorn. And I'm going to use some of the, um, what have we got? Yellow ochre. Let's try a little bit of yellow ochre. Oh, that's good. Yellow ochre on the rest of it. Kind of hoping to get it looking a little bit more like jewellery there. It's good. Oh, thanks, Dick and Tina. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Mia. Bye, guys. Thanks, Rochelle. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go a little bit longer and then I'm going to jump off because um, I know that uh, Emily was on soon, yeah? And, um, yeah, just fill out a little bit more here but I'm only going to use some of the greens that we've used around here for the for the um, leaves in the background just need to take a little bit of colour out of there Let's add a little bit of Payne's Grey into the fluffy sections using it really pale. Um, I'm just going to some flicks. I might use a bigger brush actually to add a bit of colour in there. And uh, I'll use a white gel pen to come over and add in some light highlights. I like to make sure I cover over all of the paper though. Gosh, I've been quiet today, haven't I? All right, I've got some of the 0.5 Jelly Roll pen and I'm just going to go in and mark out some of my really nice highlight sections over the top here. for my crystal I'm 
Might need a little bit heavier here. Use the uni ball one. Bye, Charlotte. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I'm just going to finish up in a sec and just going to uh, add in these highlights and then I'm done. Just wanted to add a little bit of the uni ball. It's a little bit thicker for that larger area there in the middle. Now we have these little bubbles here. I've got a white pastel pencil. And uh, just going to go and pop that in there. And then use the gel pen for the very centre of it. And you use the uni ball one in the centres of those. If I can get the thing to work. You could also use paint pen here too. Paint pen might sink into the watercolour a little bit more though. You might not get as much contrast with the paint pen. One doesn't look right. It needed a bigger circle. There we go. Alrighty guys, that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm going to finish it off and post up the finished image in the Linda Ravenscroft group. And, um, and I will see you next time. Friday for uh, Jenny Lewin. We're going to do some pumpkins and, uh, and some other bits and pieces in our image. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Hmm, he's called Mer Merlin's Calling, so I guess Vikings were around then, hey? <laughs> Thank you. Bye everyone.